The Life of Zeke Yeager, Attack on Titan Zeke Yeager is the former war chief of Marley's Warriors, assigned to take the founding titan from the Eldians of Parody Island. He's the current holder of the Beast Titan and is considered the strongest warrior by Reiner Braun, contrasting Levi Ackerman's title of Humanity's Strongest Soldier. He manipulated and deceived both sides of the war between Eldia and Marley in order to achieve his own agenda of causing the extinction of his own people, which he views as salvation. He's the son of Grisha Jaeger and Dinah Fritz, older half-brother of Eren Jaeger through his father and a member of the Fritz royal family through his mother. Welcome to the Imagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Zeke Jaeger. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Imagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background Zeke Jaeger was born to Grisha Jaeger and Dinah Fritz, restorationists who were planning to overthrow the Marley government and put the Eldians back in power. When the Marley government announced the warrior program, asking for Eldian children between the ages of 5 to 7 to serve as potential warriors, Grisha decided to enroll Zeke into the program for the latter to infiltrate the Marleyan military as a spy for the restorationists. At home, Zeke was routinely sent to his grandparents while both Dinah and Grisha attended Eldian restorationist meetings, with most of his visits being spent listening to his grandfather recounting stories of the Eldian race's crimes against the world. Over time, his parents' preoccupation with the Eldian restorationists led them growing continuously distant from Zeke, with Grisha in particular showing very little investment in his son's life outside of his studies and performance as a warrior candidate. Initially, Zeke didn't perform impressively as a warrior candidate, and his trouble keeping pace with his fellow candidates caused him to be ostracized by his peers and his instructor. However, he did manage to make one friend during his training, Tom Kassaver. After a day of routine training, Zeke happened to meet Tom while the man was in the middle of playing catch by himself. After some prodding from Tom, Zeke joined him in the game and was thrilled to hear Tom complimenting him on his pitching skill. After returning home, Zeke tried to tell his parents about the experience, but found them in the middle of a meeting with a fellow restorationist. Zeke tried eavesdropping on the conversation and listening in as his parents reassured Grice that he had the ability to save Eldia. During another public training event, Zeke was once again outperformed by all of the other candidates. To his distress, Zeke observed that both his parents had come to watch and was dismayed to see his father storm away from the field in frustration. That night, he cried in his room while listening to his parents argue over what to do about his poor performance. After the training event, Tom tried to cheer him up during one of their games of catch before joking that Zeke becoming a warrior would be a dumb idea. Surprised to hear a warrior slandering the warrior program, Zeke asked to know why Tom had chosen to become one. Tom's explanation, that he wanted the opportunity to study the Titans scientifically, surprised Zeke, but he agreed with Tom's assertion that neither of them were meant to be soldiers. While cleaning the halls of the Warriors' headquarters, Zeke overheard the Marleyan authorities were close to discovering the location of the Eldian Restorationists. Knowing that this would sentence his entire family and himself to the border of parody to be converted to pure Titans, Zeke went to his parents and begged them to stop, but was met with their insistence that what they were doing needed to be done for the good of all Eldians. In a desperate attempt to appeal to his father, Zeke reminded him of Faye and asked him if he was okay with his own son meeting the same fate. This only managed to enrage Grisha. Terrified, Zeke tried to remind his parents that their whole family would be sent to parody if they were discovered, but Grisha only reiterated his previous statement that they needed to win back the rights that Marley had taken in order to make sure that no one else met the same fate as Faye. Emotionally drained from their argument, Zeke pointed out that Faye only died because Grisha took her outside of the barrio without permission. With no one else to turn to, Zeke revealed everything to Tom. Although Zeke had resigned himself to being sent to parody and spend an eternity as a titan, Tom suggested that he turn his parents in so that only they would be punished. This would allow Zeke and his grandparents to go free. Zeke initially protested the idea, but Tom insisted that there was no other way, reminding Zeke of all the turmoil and strife he had experienced on account of his parents forcing their ideals on them without thought for his own feelings. After some thought, Zeke agreed and turned in his parents to secure his status in Marley's eyes as a loyal warrior. Soon after, Grisha and Dinah were sent to Parody Island to be transformed into pure titans. Still not knowing the truth of Zeke's heritage, Marley sent him to be raised by his grandparents. Despite believing he sent his father and mother to their deaths, Zeke sympathized with their goal to free the Eldian race. 
Thus, Zeke continued his parents' cause by operating from the shadows to secure the Eldians' freedom from Marley in his own way. Zeke continued playing catch with Tom regularly during his time in the Warrior program, often using the games as a time to have long discussions with him. During one such game, Tom revealed that the Founding Titan had the power not only to affect the memories of subjects of Amir, but also to change the composition of their bodies. Inspired by this, Zeke theorized that a holder of the Founding Titan might be able to use it to render all subjects of Amir sterile, so that they would die out within a hundred years without a need for mass genocide. Noticing Tom not immediately tossing back the baseball, Zeke heard Tom reveal that he once had a family with a Marlian woman who had killed herself and their son after learning that he was an Eldian. Listening to his mentor lament his own birth, Zeke vowed to Tom that he would take back the Founding Titan from parody and keep it out of Marley's hands to ensure that it couldn't be used to hurt anyone again. Soon after, Zeke was told the key in the planned euthanasia of the Eldians, the Founding Titan, must be in possession of someone who will agree to the plan and be in physical contact with a Titan descended from the royal family. Tom asked Zeke to find someone who is willing to go through with the plan. At the age of 17, Zeke became the eldest of the warrior candidates to be selected to receive the power of the Titans, inheriting the Beast Titan from Tom in the year 842. Zeke kept Tom's glasses after inheriting his Titan as a memento to his former friend. It was subsequently discovered that through the administration of Zeke's spinal fluid into subjects of Amir, he would be able to trigger their transformation with a scream and control their Titan forms afterwards, even when the moon was out. These abilities couldn't be explained by the Titan Biology Research Society, who were still unaware of Zeke's royal heritage. One year after inheriting the Beast Titan, Zeke and his fellow warriors used their Titan forms to crush an entire nation. Zeke used his Beast Titan form to bombard enemies in the midst of a retreat with explosive ammunition. With the battle being a large success, the Marlian army regarded the new warriors as more effective than their predecessors. Clash of the Titans Arc Five years after the start of the Parody Island operation, Zeke travels with Peek and a small number of Marlian warriors to Parody Island to infiltrate the walls. After arriving, the group locates a small village inside of Wall Rose and chooses to turn its residents into Titans. The soldiers release gas laced with Zeke's spinal fluid into the air, which is blown into the village and inhaled by the villagers. Zeke then lets out a scream, triggering all the affected Eldians to begin transforming into Titans. Zeke leads the Titans in an attack within Wall Rose. He's later spotted wandering around by Mike Zacharias, who instantly notes the strangeness of his characteristics, mistaking him for an abnormal. Noticing Mike, Zeke grabs his horse as it's returning to him, crushes it, and launches it at him, preventing his escape and throwing him from the roof he was on. After Mike falls to the mouth of a Titan, Zeke orders the Titan to withhold on eating him so that it can question Mike about the omnidirectional mobility gear. However, the Titan disobeys him, and he crushes its head to release Mike. Zeke then proceeds to interrogate Mike, but as he neglects to respond out of shock, Zeke theorizes that they speak the same language, but Mike is simply too frightened to speak. He also notes how he uses swords, indicating that the soldiers of the walls are aware that the nape is the weak spot of the titans, and removes Mike's equipment for further inspection. After stealing the equipment, he hears Mike's cries of defiance and allows the surrounding titans to devour Mike. As Mike screams in horror and pain, Zeke is amused to see that he can in fact talk. He then leaves the grounds contemplating the ODM gear, ignoring Mike's screams. Zeke is later seen again wandering around the outside of Utgard Castle, where several members of the Scout Regiment are trapped by Titans, despite them being usually inactive at night. He then climbs up Wall Rose and watches the Titans surrounding the tower from a distance. After the Scouts kill most of the larger Titans, Zeke begins throwing large stones at the tower, killing Lin and Henning along with their remaining horses. Shortly afterward, twice as many Titans begin to advance while Zeke roars at them from atop Wall Rose. Nanamud notices the unusually strategic method in their attacks, indicating that Zeke is controlling the other Titans' actions. As the Titans swarm Utgard, Zeke descends from the other side of Wall Rose. Two days later, Zeke stops in Shiganshina District and exits his Titan's body, seemingly anticipating something to come. Royal Government Arc While waiting in Shiganshina District, Zeke eventually meets up with Berthold Hoover and Reiner Braun, who try to convince him to work with them to free their comrade Annie from captivity. When he refuses, Reiner uses his armor titan to try to force him to help them, but the beast titan swiftly defeats him. As Berthold tries to remove Reiner's body from his titan form, Zeke emerges from his titan body, telling the two of them that they can rescue Annie after securing the founding titan. He then informs them of his plan to wait in Chiganshina to ambush the scout regiment in order to capture Eren and the Founding Titan. Return to Shiganshina Arc 
After settling their disagreement, the three warriors begin waiting for the scout regiment atop Wall Maria. Zeke advises Reiner and Berthold not to worry about Annie, pointing out that the scouts would not be able to torture her without triggering her Titan abilities and theorizing that she's likely only in hiding. Noting their dissatisfaction, he questions whether they've lost the resolve. He offers to fight Reiner again to decide what they will do next, but threatens to feed him to another warrior if he loses again. When neither of them is willing to risk fighting him, Zeke proclaims that their sole objective is to regain the coordinate in order to put an end to what he calls a cursed history. The car titan arrives shortly afterward to inform them of the scout's imminent arrival, and the three proceed to their designated posts to prepare for their upcoming battle. The next day, the scout regiment initiates its operation to retake Walmaria. After Eren manages to seal the outer gate of Shiganshina, the warriors launch their attack. After Reiner's failed attack and momentary downfall, Zeke transforms along with a horde of titans outside the wall and immediately throws a large boulder at the wall's inner gate, destroying it so that the scout regiment's horses won't get over it. Having cut off their only escape route for the soldiers and trapping them within Shiganshina, Zeke begins advancing towards the district with his army. As he advances, he roars, ordering smaller titans to attack the scout regiment's horses while having the larger titans form a circle around the entrance of Shiganshina district in order to prevent the soldiers from escaping. After some time, Zeke receives the signal to throw a barrel containing Berthold into Shiganshina in the form of a roar from Reiner's titan form. After sending Berthold over the wall, Zeke begins assaulting the scouts north of the district with a barrage of rocks, shredding the front line of buildings in the process. He muses about his first pitch being too high and decides to go for a perfect game. Each throw breaks the sound barrier and every soldier who's caught in the barrage is utterly mutilated, forcing Levi and the rest of the soldiers to retreat to the base of the wall. As he continues to throw projectiles, Zeke notices a large group of soldiers led by Erwin Smith riding towards them. Zeke notes that he had expected a better counterattack than a suicide charge before throwing another barrage of rocks at them. As his pitches hit their mark, Zeke laments the fact that King Race erased the soldiers' memories of the world, forcing them to keep making the same mistakes and push themselves to die honorably as a result of their ignorance. Getting worked up at the thought, Zeke accidentally crushes the stone in his hand even into dust and is forced to calm himself down for a moment before resuming his attack. Killing many more soldiers, Zeke notices there are some that, despite the odds, are still alive and continue their charge. Seeing their persistence causes him to become annoyed again opening that they can shoot smoke all day long as it will not achieve anything. As he finishes off the stragglers with a final barrage of stones, Zeke begins to lament their deaths before noticing with alarm that the titans flanking him have been killed. Bewildered as to what's happening, he's suddenly ambushed by Levi who slices his arm to pieces as he attempts to grab him. Realizing that he's facing the soldier that Reiner and Berthold warned him about, Zeke tries to guard his nape but is immediately blinded by Levi. Before Zeke can react to being blinded, his titan's Achilles tendons are slashed, leaving him unable to stand. Realizing that he has no time to harden his nape, Zeke tries to use his hand to shield him, but is immediately cut to pieces as well. As Levi begins to cut open his nape, Zeke emerges from his titan, trying to use the steam emitted to blind Levi, but is immediately skewered through the mouth by the captain. Luckily, before Levi can execute Zeke, the car titan rescues him and carries him away from the battlefield. As they flee, Zeke orders his remaining titans to kill Levi, gloating that once Levi's dead, he will have wiped out the entire scout regiment. The car titan carries Zeke into Shiganshina, where he locates and approaches Eren, who's holding Berthold hostage. Zeke recognizes him as his younger half-brother and tries to talk Eren down, claiming that they are both victims of his father. Eren is shocked by Zeke's resemblance to Grisha, but before Zeke can elaborate, he's forced to retreat due to the arrival of Levi, whose sudden appearance takes Zeke by surprise. As he takes his leave, he apologizes to Berthold, noting that he will not be able to save him, before promising Eren that he will come back and save him. While escaping, Zeke and the Car Titan locate a severely injured Reiner, rescuing him from the remaining scouts who have captured him. Marley Arc At some point after the battle at Shiganshina, Zeke makes contact with Kiyomi Azumabito from the nation of Hizuru on the possibility of forming an alliance with Parody. As a token of goodwill, Zeke brings out the ODM gear he took from Miki Zicarius and presents it to her. He mentions the existence of Iceburst Stone, which powers the device and there are scant traces still inside. Noting that it's found solely on Parody, Zeke tells Kiyomi it would greatly assist the nation of Hizuru. 
The two sides agree, and Kiyomi makes plans to travel to Parody while Zeke returns to Marley and continues with the war effort. Shortly after the Battle of Shiganshina District, the Marley Mideast War began. At some point during the war, it was decided that warrior candidate Colt Grice would be the one to inherit Zeke's Beast Titan at the end of Zeke's term. At the climax of the war, four years since it began, Zeke takes part in the assault of Fort Slava. As Eldian captives parachute down from an airship, Zeke transforms the captives into Titans, inflicting a devastating airstrike upon Fort Slava. After the Armored Titan destroys the Anti-Titan artillery, Zeke transforms into the Beast Titan and joins the battle. Using leftover artillery rounds as projectiles, he destroys the Mid-East Allied Forces fleet. The fleet fires upon Zeke before their destruction, but Reiner's Armored Titan saves Zeke, being destroyed in the process. After the conclusion of the battle, Zeke takes part in a meeting with Marley officials to discuss the war's conclusion and Marley's future. Here, Zeke suggests that Marley should resume the Parody Island operation to retake the Founding Titan as soon as possible so that the Founding Titan can be used to buy time to reorganize their military. Zeke also expresses his desire to redeem himself for his failure in Parody before the time comes for Colt to inherit the Beast Titan. After the meeting, Zeke speaks with Colt about the latter's unique powers as the Beast Titan. Commander Magath joins the conversation, and they discuss the 32 survey ships that have disappeared when sent to Parody Island. Zeke speculates that at least two Titans were responsible for the disappearance of the 32 survey ships, and informs Magath of the existence of the Ackerman clan in Parody. Zeke departs on a train to Liberio. After the train arrives, Zeke walks with the warrior forces into the internment zone. When he arrives, he is lovingly welcomed by his grandparents. Zeke later holds an unofficial meeting, attended by the fellow warriors and cult. He speaks about the world's growing animosity towards Eldians, as well as the future in which conventional weaponry will eclipse Titan weaponry. He also expresses worry for the future of the Eldian race for these reasons. Zeke states that to solve these concerns, Marley must continue with the plan to regain the Founder. With the prestigious Tiber family narrating the warrior's plan to the world, improving the reputation of the mainland Eldians. These points are debated among the warriors, with him and Peak staying on the same wavelength throughout. The unofficial meeting had been tapped by Marleyan authorities, with Zeke seemingly aware of this fact. Afterwards, along with the warriors, Zeke attends a meeting with his superiors where they explain their plans for the new operation on Parody Island. On the night of the Liberio Festival, Zeke arrives with the warriors for Willie Tiber's speech. When Falco Grice asks Reiner to accompany him, Zeke allows it since there's still time before the play begins. Just as the show is starting, a Marley soldier informs the remaining warriors that Magath had summoned them. Whilst being walked to Magath's apparent location, the soldier instructs Zeke to split off and go through the front gate, which he does. After hearing the battle between the Attack Titan, the Warhammer Titan, and the military, Zeke transforms into the Beast Titan and approaches the battlefield while joining the Cart and Jaw Titans. He provides artillery once more by launching debris at the soldiers and nearly gets attacked by two soldiers but is saved by Peak. He has her provide covering fire from behind and he repels the scouts. He then announces that Eren is not his enemy, but another soldier from Parody Island is, Levi Ackerman. He calls out to Levi and demands him to come face him again, stating that time is running out. Shortly afterwards, he notices Armin's transformation into the Colossal Titan from the nearby harbor along with everyone else. While the explosion has everyone distracted, Levi ambushes Zeke and slices his nape, rendering his Titan inert. Levi immediately throws a bomb into Zeke's open nape, blowing it up. Using the explosion as cover, Levi cuts Zeke out of his nape and brings him aboard the Eldian airship. As he regenerates his severed limbs, Zeke converses with both Eren and Hanji. When both Gabi Braun and Falco are brought aboard, Zeke expresses surprise at seeing them there. He then discusses with Hanji that despite a number of miscalculations, namely the two warrior cadets, the sacrifices made during the fight were worth it to ensure Eldia had both the Founding Titan and someone with royal blood. He's now confident that Eldia will have a chance at finally obtaining their freedom. After arriving on Parody Island, Zeke is seen with Levi inside of a carriage, commenting that the citizens celebrating in the streets are ignorant of the true impact of the assault. Although Levi tries making death threats to him, Zeke is unperturbed and coolly insists that Levi take him to Eren. Levi instead takes Zeke to the forest of giant trees, informing him that this is where they'll be staying. Marveling at the sight, Zeke asks Levi if he can show the trees to Gabby and Falco, but is told that it depends on his own actions. War for Parody Arc While Zeke is being guarded inside of the forest, he explains how he was able to transform the citizens of Ragako. Levi is bothered by Zeke's nonchalant explanation, accusing him of having no concern for human life. 
Zeke waves away Levi's criticisms, explaining that his loyalty to Marley would have been questioned if he had not complied with his orders. Changing the subject, Zeke requests to know when he will be able to begin experimenting with Eren's Titan abilities, but Levi claims he's not allowed to answer. Zeke claims that it would be unwise to remain inactive for much longer, to which Levi readily agrees. He later asks if there was any wine left, and Levi informs him that the soldiers drank it all. Zeke sarcastically mentions that Levi comes up with the worst punishments. As Levi walks off, Zeke sees an opportunity to escape and runs into the forest. Before Levi or any of the other soldiers can stop him, Zeke lets out a piercing scream. This triggers all the scouts in the camp who drank the wine to transform into titans, which fall out of the trees around Levi. Confident that Levi wouldn't slaughter his own subordinates, Zeke mockingly states that he didn't want to do this, but laments that this isn't a proper conflict. Regardless, he summons three of the newly created titans and bids farewell to Levi. He ponders if the Eldians truly understand the ramifications of their surprise attack on the Barrio, and inwardly states that only he and Eren truly know the costs. As he plans to have the Titans take him to the agreed-upon meeting place with Eren, Zeke is stunned to see the bloodied and angered Levi appear in front of him. Zeke frantically orders one of the Titans to attack him, and then subsequently transforms into the Beast Titan. He immediately hardens his nape and scans the area for Levi. Finding him, Zeke tears apart the final surviving Titan and throws the bloody Titan pieces towards his foe. He chastises Levi for killing his subordinates and notices many tree branches falling towards him. Zeke is unable to spot Levi among the branches and is struck by several thunder spears that pierce through the hardened nape of the Beast Titan. Horrified, he only has a moment to process this before Levi detonates the spears, severely injuring Zeke. Sometime later, Zeke awakens tied up on a carriage with a thunder spear sticking out of his abdomen. Levi informs him that the fuse and triggering mechanism are tied around his neck and any sudden movements can set it off. While Zeke vomits uncontrollably, Levi begins to slice off Zeke's legs to prevent him from transforming, making Zeke scream in agony. Only half-conscious, Zeke asks where his glasses are, before having his memories of Tom flash before his eyes. Zeke mutters about his plan to euthanize the Eldian nation to ensure the world's safety. Levi mocks him for this, declaring that his impending death at the hands of a titan is too merciful for the lives he has taken. Zeke weakly protests that he was saving their potential children's lives by killing them, prompting Levi to angrily prepare to cut off his legs again. Suddenly, Zeke screams out Tom's name and jerks his head back, pulling the pin on the thunder spear lodged in his stomach, causing an explosion. The explosion leaves Zeke completely mutilated and his wounds too severe for his body to regenerate from. As he begins to succumb to his injuries, Zeke recalls the meeting he had with Eren in which the two of them agreed to sterilize the Eldian race. As Zeke loses consciousness, one of the titans he created regenerates and approaches his body. Rather than devour him, the titan tears open its own stomach and places him inside. Zeke regains consciousness to find himself alone in an unknown location. Surprised to discover that he is somehow still alive, he notices a lone girl silently reconstructing his body out of soil. As this occurs, Zeke looks above him and notices strange patterns in the sky. He theorizes that he's experienced a path and that the girl before him is his ancestor, Emir Fritz. After a short time, Zeke is released from the Titan's stomach, fully healed from his injuries and in a slight daze. He watches on as soldiers pursue Hanji before being approached by a number of Jaegerists with Flock Forster trying to ask him what happened. Recomposing himself, Zeke avoids his questions and merely proclaims that they just have to move forward before departing with the Jaegerists. Zeke arrives in Shiganshina to find the district under siege from Marley's forces and Eren locked in combat with Reiner. After climbing to the top of Walmaria in his titan form, Zeke launches debris which knocks Reiner off of Eren and commends his younger brother for standing against Marley's forces, comforting him that he will now take care of the enemies. Zeke throws a barrage of stones which destroys at least some of the Marleyan airships before turning his focus towards Peak and Magath. After the Marleyan forces begin to fall back, he spots Reiner charging at Eren and proceeds to bombard the armored titan, as well as Porco when he tries to ambush Eren. Zeke begins to gloat about how close he and Eren are to achieving their dream, but is silenced after spotting the charred remains of the Cart Titan. Believing Peak to have perished in the attack, he mourns his former comrade's death. He is caught off guard by the sight of several Marleyan soldiers emerging near the Cart Titan to attack. Before Zeke can react, Magath fires a round from the anti-Titan artillery atop the Cart Titan's corpse. Damaging his Titan's nape and shearing off much of his human body, 
Incapacitated by this, Zeke plummets off the wall and crashes into the ground. As Zeke comes to his senses, he sees Eren grappling with Reiner and announces to his brother that he will transform the soldiers who have ingested his spinal fluid. Struggling to get to his feet, Zeke is about to unleash a scream when he notices both Colt and Falco arrive at his location. Zeke is shocked to hear from Colt that Falco accidentally ingested his spinal fluid and begs him to refrain from screaming until Falco can safely get out of range of the scream. Dismayed at Falco's predicament, Zeke gives his condolences to Colt and remarks how he understands that his former comrade merely wants to protect his younger brother. Despite this, Zeke ignores Colt's request and lets out a scream, triggering all the affected Eldians to transform into pure titans. Seeing Eren struggling to get away from Reiner, Zeke orders a newly transformed Falco to fight Reiner and kill him. After giving the command, Zeke is subsequently shot by Maggot's anti-titan artillery a second time. Exiting their titans to make it appear that they both have been defeated, Zeke crawls towards Eren and reaches out towards his brother. However, before the two can reach each other, Eren is decapitated by a blast from an anti-titan rifle fired by Gabby. Eren's head lands in Zeke's outstretched hand, allowing him to activate the Founding Titan before Eren can die from his injuries. Zeke arrives in the coordinate first and is forced to wait for Eren. While waiting, he uses his time to learn more about the Founding Titan, culminating in him learning to break Carl Fritz's vow of non-aggression. Zeke waits in chains until Eren finally arrives, informing his confused younger brother that they're inside the coordinate. As Amir Fritz approaches them, Zeke explains her presence to Eren, theorizing that she uses the sand in the coordinate to create the Nine Titans and heal their users' bodies when they're injured. Zeke encourages Eren to command Ymir to begin the euthanasia plan, but Eren first asks about Zeke's chains. Zeke claims that the chains are what keeps Carl Fritz's descendants from acting freely. To Zeke's despair, Eren reveals that he has no intention of following the euthanasia plan and was only using his brother as a means to activate the founder. Heartbroken, Zeke reveals to Eren that he freed himself from Fritz's vow while waiting for Eren and that Amir will only obey a person with royal blood. Chaining Eren, Zeke laments that Eren has been brainwashed by Grisha. Despite Eren's protests, Zeke begins showing him their father's memories. As the brothers systematically observe Grisha's memories of his time on parody, Zeke bitterly notes how seemingly easy it was for Grisha to move on to a new family and forget about his old one. He shows Eren how Grisha used his occupation as a doctor to socialize with nobles to try to gain information on the royal family, despite the risks such actions would pose for his family. Zeke himself is surprised to learn that Grisha apparently delayed his mission upon discovering the race family's chapel out of love for his new family, coldly admitting that Grisha might have learned from his failure with Zeke. To Zeke's shock, his musings are interrupted by a scene of Grisha seemingly trying to apologize to his first son in his sleep. The two brothers continue their journey through Grisha's memories, with Zeke admitting that Eren was evidently not brainwashed by Grisha. In light of this, Zeke questions Eren on why he betrayed him and what he had planned to do with the Founder's power. Eren answers by stating he had always been this way and that the pitiful brother Zeke had wished for doesn't exist in him. Despite this, Zeke promises to save Eren by opening his eyes to the danger Eldia presents, deciding to do this before saving the world with his euthanasia plan. Zeke and Eren eventually arrive at the date Grisha steals the Founding Titan from Frida at the Rice Chapel. While watching the memory play out, Zeke notices Eren's face distorted with rage at listening to King Fritz's ideology, and is later astonished when Grisha explains the Attack Titan's ability to peer into the future inheritor's memories. Zeke is shocked once more when Grisha finds himself unable to kill the Race family, confused as to whether the past had changed. His shock quickly turns to angst, however, when Eren begins talking to their father, encouraging him to fight. Outside of the chapel, Grisha, faintly aware of Zeke's presence, despairingly reveals to him that the future will not go his way, but Eren's. However, he tells Zeke that when seeing one of Eren's memories from the future, what he saw was terrible. Grisha becomes fully aware of Zeke's presence and emotionally embraces him, expressing regret that he was a poor father and still loves him. Grisha ends by pleading Zeke to stop Eren. In the Unknown Land, Zeke breaks away from Eren and looks at him with horror while processing the fact that Eren had been the one to push Grisha to fight and had shown certain memories to their father in order to manipulate him. Eren thanks Zeke for allowing him to access Grisha's path, thereby enabling the future he had seen within his father's memories to occur. Terrified, Zeke orders Emir Fritz to steal the ability to reproduce from the subjects of Emir. As she begins walking towards the Pillar of Light, Zeke tells Eren that Grisha had wished to stop him, having seen part of Eren's future which Eren had not. When Eren escapes his chains after a struggle, Zeke says that it's pointless as once Emir begins to move, nothing is capable of stopping her. Eren embraces Emir and begs her to help him end the world with her power. 
He's even more alarmed to see that Amir has stopped moving and frantically tries to reach his brother and Amir, repeatedly ordering Amir to obey his previous command, stating that he's descended from royal blood. However, before he can reach them, Amir agrees to help Eren, activating the rumbling. Upon Eren's transformation, Zeke is evidently eaten and loses control of his body. What remains of his being is left alone in the paths until he's joined by Armin, who had met a similar fate after confronting Eren's founding titan. After Armin attempts to introduce himself, Zeke asks Armin if Amir also ate him. Armin sits with Zeke and listens as Zeke explains his theory about the origin of life. Zeke theorizes that all life forms find their meaning by multiplying, and that it was a resultant fear of death which caused Amir to spawn her undying titan body and escape to the world of the path. Zeke theorizes that the reason she continued to obey the Fritz family for 2,000 years was because she still felt a connection to the world and that she likely chose to help Eren because he was the first person able to understand her. Armin tries to get Zeke to tell him how to escape the path world, but Zeke believes there's no point in continuing to fight. Armin reminds the man that their allies are fighting for the lives of innocent people, but Zeke points out that every living thing must die eventually. Armin begins recalling memories from his childhood which brought meaning to his life despite their insignificance. Zeke looks up and is startled to see Armin holding a baseball. Taking it from him, Zeke recalls the times he would play catch with Tom and admits that the time was indeed precious to him. He muses that he would likely play catch again even if the game didn't mean anything. Turning, Zeke sees the former Titan inheritor standing behind him, including his father and Tom. He stands to meet them, admitting to Tom that even though he still thinks their euthanasia plan was right, he wouldn't mind being born again if it meant they could play catch again. He thanks Grisha for his life and asks his two father figures to lend him their strength. Zeke emerges from Eren's Titan and begins calling for Levi. After getting his attention, Zeke takes a moment to admire the day and laments that he didn't notice its beauty sooner. He wryly admits that he didn't deserve to notice, given the atrocities he has committed, before being decapitated by Levi. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.